All right, so in the attic bathroom here, I got this little cubby spot that we need to put some shelves in. Let's measure this up and uh, get started building something. We don't want the drywall to be the back, so what we basically want to do is build a shallow cabinet. So let's see what we got in the way of scrap one by up here in the attic. Here's some old bed slats. Let's say three and a half. I think we'll go with three and a half. That's probably a little less than four feet long. This could make some shelves. Let's see what else we got. This is what I was using as a baseboard. Pretty prime stuff. Three and a half. We're gonna get this without having to buy anything. More baseboard. Oh, that's been ripped down. That was not baseboard. Yeah, let's see if there's something better. That's no good. Ah, that's good. How big is that? 13. Pretty good. How many shelves can that make? Two, three, four, five, six. I don't know that we need any more about the sides we need 65 inches for the sides not seeing any really long stuff this is gonna be the back look at that look at that I think I got this in, in the scrap bin at Home Depot for a couple of dollars well I know in the basement I got some extra wood stored that are from taking down some fake beams all right so here is my wood storage in the basement or at least part of it. So these are one buys. Five and a half. I'll have to rip those down. I wonder if we could do this with the new Makita brushless circular saw instead of doing it with, with the table saw. I'd love to use that new saw. I know this is more kind of on the side of finished carpentry and that would probably be a rough cut but I'm just so tempted. This is actually really beautiful wood. Oh look at that. Oh yeah. Almost too good to use for something like this. I got so much this painting down here. Oh, that's look at that. That's that's even smoother. I mean, there's not there's not even grain in that. That doesn't even look like it doesn't even look like pine. Where does that? But that's got to be it's got to be like what is that fur? Somebody out there probably knows. All right, this notch right here is exactly three and a half. So I should be able to take a pencil, put it in that notch, and run a line that is exactly three and a half inches, pretty close, from the edge. Gotta use this side because this side's broken, and that is just wide enough. I just realized I was cutting on the wrong side of my line. <sighs> so much for not wasting wood. Here's another board. This one has a split at the end. Let's go ahead and cut off that end.
think it'll work better to do this left-handed. This blade is exactly three and a half inches from the edge of the table. That means we can use something as a guide along there to get our perfect cut. First, I'm gonna clamp this so it doesn't slide. I think that did pretty good. And one little, tiny little saw mark there. But this is almost like it's been planed. That is nice. Just maybe a sixteenth shy. I can get out the block plane and take that down a little bit. Here's my planing setup. I just have this piece of plywood screwed to the top of this table. I don't know what this table was used for. This was somebody else's workshop before I moved into this house. But anyway, it works. So we will just butt this against that, and that gives us a stop to plane against so the board, board doesn't slip off the edge of the table. I'm going to see if I can just freehand this one. So since I know the table is three and a half inches to the blade, I'm not even going to mark this one. Oh, like glass. Let's give it a little plain. Yes. It's very dusty in here. Now I got my two 65 inch boards. So now I've got to come up with some sort of shelving scheme. Now we know there's going to be a board at the top and a board at the bottom. So we'll go ahead and mark the three quarters of an inch for those. Sixty-three and a quarter inches. What is this? 12 inches. Let's space them out 12 inches and then the bottom shelf will probably be a little bit taller and that'll work out great. So there's 12 inches. Then we're going to skip three quarters. Go down 12 inches.
If I was building something that I needed it to be really sturdy, I would go ahead and dado these out, but I'm not. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use glue and screws. So let's go get our shelf scraps that we're gonna use and cut them all to length. Now the best way to do this would be to use a miter saw and a stop, and these will all come out perfectly the same length. But we can start by truing up the ends here and getting rid of these screw holes. Let's try two at one time. Set the depth pretty deep. Max it out there. Nice. Now let's set the depth exactly. Measure our 11 inches. I'm going to use an awl for this to make it more exact. Now let's cut them both at the same time. Save these and use these. And true up the ends on these. That's okay. I'll do it now. Oh, you gotta see that. Oh, that's so smooth. Check them out. Perfect. Perfect. Do a couple more. off with a cloth. This is going to be the inside of the shelf. I want the screw holes to be through here, but I don't want them to be going this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip one side over and flush it up, make sure they're even. I found these self-tapping cabinet screws. I've got a little drill bit end on them there. I don't know if you can see that. There it is. That's a pretty skinny shank. I think these will work without pre-drilling. So let's set the boards up like this with the inside faces. And then we're gonna get our other boards and we're gonna put them in between. There you go. We'll start with the middle pieces and work our way out. We can go ahead and start the screws.
I'm sure it would be easier to transfer all the marks to both sides, but I do things the lazy way sometimes. If I figure I can get it good enough, I don't know that that is good enough. That one's a little wide. It'll be close, but it'll be okay. All right, time for a little glue. If some of you don't know about the Makita Impact driver, it has speed settings on it. And right now I have it set on the lowest speed setting for screwing things. So this is maxed out right there. But if I press this button, I can start on high. And that is crazy fast. But that would like screw these screws like right through the wood. So. I'm just leaving it on the lowest setting. There's actually four settings on it, so. Now we're ready to put this side on. Take this off. I'm going to put glue on all the ends of these boards. get what's gonna be the back I really need to clean up up here I will do that soon I'm trying to use up all this scrap wood I don't think this one's gonna be long enough so we're gonna have to use this one 
Hey, let's get an exact measurement on this so we can make the back. This is the factory edge here, square off of that. These cuts don't have to be perfect because they're going to be hidden behind a shelf. So they can be a little jagged, they can be a little big, a little short. Shorter is probably better than big. So air on the side of smaller, that way it won't give any trouble when you're sliding it into the cutout in the wall. That's probably good. Hearing protection. this cut off piece of plywood I had standing up in the corner and see if I can find the factory edge on it and use it as a straight edge to rip the side here. A taut string should be straight over there. Pull it around there. That is pretty straight. Might be able to use either side of this one. Every once in a while when you rip a board it ends up exactly straight on both sides. Not always though. This is the straight side. Yeah, I think there is a little bit of a rub right here somewhere. So I'm going to mark that for future use. So if we clamp this straight edge three and a half inches from our mark, that should make the saw run right where it should. Apparently it's not exact, so we're going to move this guide over a little bit. There's another good spot for it. Now this super thin plywood is very prone to warping with humidity changes. So I really want to secure it well. So what I'm going to do is everywhere there's a shelf, I want to make a line on the back of this and I'm going to put some glue on each of the backs of the shelves and around the outside. And then I'm going to put some small nails in all the shelves and around the perimeter. And that'll lock it all together and keep it squared up. Also, if you'll notice, this thing isn't exactly square. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze from this corner to this corner to bring these back in square. Nothing fancy. I'm just going to use a ratcheting tie down like one might use on the back of a truck. Flip it over. See if you can see that gap close when I tighten the strap. That is it.
much of a head on them, so I intentionally, you can see that's just like a straight piece of wire right there. So I intentionally bent the little ones over there at the end. Kind of make them act like a staple. But then some of them have these big heads. So that is the shelf built. Now we just need to caulk and paint it before installing it. This is my daughter's workshop, by the way, this side. I tend to work on that side over there. She wanted a little space to uh, to uh, do these key making things. She stamps keys and makes some jewelry and stuff like that. So this is where she works when she's home. She's now at college. Actually, before we caulk and paint it, it might be a good idea to take it upstairs and see if it actually fits in the space. God, I got this screw up here and I had a light hanging from. I'll take that out really quick. It definitely fits. Let's get it all finished up. Things are totally flat. I'm also wearing a respirator.
makes the next coats look much better. For the official paint job on the built-in shelves, I'm going to use this lacquer, Krylon lacquer. I think this works better when you're going to be setting stuff on things that might be wet. Or this is supposed to be ultra hard and durable coating. It even says no runs, no drips, no errors. Let's see about that. Interior, exterior. Cool. <laughs> So that's only supposed to take 15 minutes to dry. We'll give it like half an hour or so and then we'll move on to installing it. Hey, that looks like it's gonna work. Check the parallel on this. About four and a half. Okay, so the bottom needs to come in a lot and the top needs to go out. So that's good because that will even out that gap a little bit there. All right, we got four and three quarters. Four and three quarters. When I push that over, that should have made a little gap under here. And it did. So we will put a shim in there. You can see it moving there. Look at that. Nothing holding it up. Now make sure we're getting flush at the same time. So let's fire some nails in it. Now obviously you could hand hammer these or you could even screw them and paint over the screw or whatever, but if you've got a nailer, why not use it? What have we got in here? Two and a half inch. This is probably way overkill, but it is a shelf. A couple of drops of oil. forgot to flush up the bottom corner on this side so all this is flush up here up here and down here but this corner is not this corner needed to come out I've already put some nails in there up here at least so I'm gonna show you how I think I can get this pulled out without doing without having to dig out those nails I'm gonna start by adding one of these little self-tapping screws down in the corner. If you don't have self-tapping, I would drill a little hole first, just so you don't split the wood. Piece of wood, so we don't smash our drywall. Pull out. Pull out, check it for flush. Right there. Put a couple in for good measure. Take that back out. And that'll actually be covered up by our trim, so we don't even have to worry about filling that hole. Time for trim. 
So the first thing we want to do is make this side casing that's going to bridge this gap. Four and seven eighths, quarter inch reveal. That would be four and three eighths. All right, got our tape on the floor. We were going to have a quarter inch reveal there. 79 and three eighths. Look at all this. This is all the stuff that came. These were box beams and this fake that made up this fake beam system in our den. So I pulled it down and instead of just throwing it all out, I decided to save it. So these things are, oh, what is this? Oh man. All right, I pulled off a couple of pieces here. These two pieces of wood here, probably all we need. Let's go ahead and cut this board to length before we rip it to our four and three eighths. But before we rip it to length, let's go ahead and square up the end. So should I rip this on the table saw or should I, it looks like I'd have to hold the saw right about there with that much overhang. So what you typically do is pinch, pinch the edge of your saw very carefully. I don't recommend this to anybody. And then you let your finger work as a guide as you move it along the wood, but you could still end up with some some waves going through there. I don't know, I'm so tempted. Uh, intentionally just about a sixteenth wide so I could plane the saw marks out. I bought this plane oh, probably close to 20 years ago when I first started doing DIY jobs. I think it cost me 29 bucks or 39 bucks at Lowe's. Not more than 39, I don't think. And I don't have any fancy sharpening jigs or anything. I literally just use this cheap Smith's diamond. I don't have different grades or anything. In fact, what does it even say? Doesn't even say what grade it is. I guess you could get different different types to put in here, but all I've ever used is this. And I don't have any honing guides to keep it at the right angle or anything. I just put my bevel down and do some little figure eights and actually rub it all sorts of different ways to try to use the whole stone evenly. And then uh, and that's it. And then I take uh, my sock then I keep my plane in and I wipe all the shavings out of it, keep it clean. No oil, no water, no nothing. And it stays sharp enough for me. I, I've never had a problem and I've been using it for, like I said, about 20 years now. That is a pretty heavy cut. started. I give a slight angle to my plane. I give a slight angle so it, that it slices instead of chisels it away.
Oh, and you can see here, I can have my quarter inch reveal. Wait a minute, what if I make this whole head casing one piece and I just cut it so that it makes a jog right here and then it drops here. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So this piece of scrap wood I just found here, if we make it match the trim on the shower, let's see, we got a little more than two and a half inches, so that's great. We can rip off about an eighth of an inch and it will be perfect. Side needs to be 64. Now, because I didn't support my cutoff, I actually tore out a bunch of wood there. But, this is going to be the face of the wood, face of the trim. And we will make this side go to the drywall. And once it's caulked, you're not going to notice that. The caulk will fill that, fill that hole up, that gap up. Now we need a 14 inch piece. So I'm using my thumb back here just to hold that flush because obviously this is like a 1 8 inch kerf here from the table saw and this is like a 1 16th. So it could leave a gap if I don't hold it flush with my thumb. Obviously, careful not to cut it. And that 
see it right there. Now I just need to cut this out. Here it is, all cut up. So this is the head casing. You can see where it drops. And this is the side of the door. This will be the door. That's the side casing in the door. That's the other side of the shelves. And there's the bottom casing for the shelves. I found this in my stock, so I'm going to try to use this.
mistakes and I'm not even sure how. So let's just ignore this piece. I'm gonna take this out. This head jam, if it is in the appropriate place on this side with the right reveal, it is way too low here. So that needs to be cut back to like right about there. Also, the reveal is wrong here. I need to take about that much more off of that. So now I scribed this off the inside of that shelf. So that will be where that top shelf is. So we need to come up an extra quarter of an inch. Right there. Let's get a test fit this before we plane that a little and uh, prime it. Yes. Now there's a reason when I'm shooting along the edge of a board, I turn the nail gun sideways. It's because these brads are wedge shaped. I'll show you. And if you were to use the chisel tip so that it shot this way, so that the blade goes like this, so the chisel goes like this instead of like this, it could follow the grain of the wood and curve out and pop through your jam here or somewhere else you don't want it. So you orient the nails so the chisel goes either this way or this way. So even if it does deflect, it stays in line with the wood and doesn't pop out the sides.
and that will enable me to adjust the bottom here. get this lined up right over here. Sorry I can't get back any further to get the whole shot because I'm literally against the ceiling in here. So we'll put a little piece of base molding in there really quick and then it's just caulk and paint. I did want to point out this head casing where I let it run a little long. That was not intentional, but after seeing it, I decided to leave it because I thought, you know, there's no other similar trim in this bathroom. There's nothing to compare it to. So it can actually run a little long and it could look like, you know, an oversized head casing. Uh, there's probably a name for that. I don't know what it is. Um, but I kind of wish after seeing it, I wish I'd done that with all the head head casings because I actually think it would look a little better if they ran long. I think that adds a nice little touch to it. But um, anyways, so all I got now is to come back and fill in all the nail holes with a little dap and caulk up the reveals in the outside and paint. I am not going to film that so we're going to just end this here. There's the complete built-in shelf all trimmed out. If you ever see it again, hopefully it'll be painted.